JPEG, PNG, PSD, TIFF, GIF, all these image formats and many others seem to be very similar, but in reality are all used for different things. Today we're going to review the pros and cons of the different image file types and help you understand which to use and when to use them. And I'm smart, and I'm gonna throw in a brand new video for tutorials with JS. In today's tutorial, I want to talk a little about image formats and what image formats you should be saving to. If you see an image format that you don't recognize, or if you are printing, if you're creating a design for web, if you get a PSD file or an XCF file, what do those letters mean? And what pretty much is the best file type to work in? or to export and if you're working in GIMP, if you're working in Photoshop, Illustrator, whatever program you may be working in, in Paint even. So hopefully this video will help you figure out uh, which file types to uh, look at and which file types to use. So there are six main different file types uh, and the most standard one coming straight off of editing uh, that's pretty much alpha version of an image is the XCF file and the PSD file. Now what the XCF and the PSD file is, is basically a an image file that has all the layers, all the channels, all the color correction, has all the elements of a picture inside. Everything that is saved within that picture after it was edited or after filters were applied to it, uh, different paths, different selections, all of that data is stored in a PSD and in an XCF. XCF is for GIMP, PSD is for Photoshop. You also have things such as an AI file, which is for Adobe Illustrator, which deals with vector art. But basically, uh, the foundation of an image after it's gone through editing, obviously, is a PSD XCF file most of the time. Now one of the positive pros of these file types is that you're able to change everything in them. Every selection, every path, every layer, every channel, every filter, you're able to alter that because all of those settings have been changed and have been saved within those file types. However, the negatives is that it's not really a display format. Even if you can find the codecs to display thumbnails of XCF images or PSD images, you cannot upload them to any type of website, you cannot upload them to uh, social media, you can't really use them in any way to display the image, it's mainly used for editing. Uh, they also tend to be a bit bigger, so you may want to think of saving it to one of the other formats. Uh, so basically, if you are still in the editing process, you want to save as a XCF or a PSD most of the time. Now, the next most basic form of image format that's at its foundation are the raw image formats, such as NEF for Nikon, CR2 for Canon, and there are several other extensions after an image uh, that you may not have seen even, and they're mainly native to your camera. Now, the good thing about these images is that there's no loss of information from the camera sensor, and there's also a high depth in color channels. So this is probably the highest quality image you can use a raw image format. And most of the time you want to be editing these in uh, something like Adobe Lightroom because you're able to convert them to a DNG file. And then with that DNG file, you can obviously edit uh, in Lightroom and still have that high quality from the raw image format. Now the negative is that it's not suitable for display because they're very bulky, they're very big, so they, they do tend to be very heavy in size. Uh, the content format can also change without notice, such as new camera models. It can impact support by your favorite software as well, so if you happen to have a really, really new camera and you have raw footage that ends in like, Eight dot ABC, even though it's probably not one, and you know no other software has that codec yet. Then you're out of luck, and you won't be able to edit your images. But the the two foundation formats are raw image formats and uh, PSD and XCFs, depending on if you're doing photography or if you're doing graphic design. Most of the time, you want to use raw footage for storage of camera output. Uh, you can make a second copy though for a more universal format such as some of the other ones we're gonna go over right now. So those are basically the, the bottom of the pyramid. And then you sort of have the top of the pyramid, which is exporting. When you export an image, you are compressing it and you are making it a display format image. You're able to actually make that image 
uh, display friendly for the web, for social media, for posting, for printing. And these tend to be either JPEG, TIFF, PNG, or GIF, GIF. Uh, now, we're going to go over JPEG first. The pros about JPEG is that it compresses the file very efficiently. It's a very small file, and it pretty much is supported by every device. So JPEG is probably the most basic image format that you may want to export to because everything supports it, and it's also a very small file size. You also don't lose that much quality. Now, the downside is that the compression is lossy and it slightly alters the image data a bit. If you keep on putting a JPEG uh, through Photoshop and continuously keep editing it and repeatedly editing, editing it, uh, slowly the image quality will degrade, so you may want to be careful with that. That's why I'm saying if you want to do continuous editing, stick with a PSD or an XCF file. Also, while it does have good quality levels and compression levels in photography, generally, if we're talking about graphic d designs, uh, gen generated graphics or generated text for the web, uh, you can pretty much see a quality loss in JPEG. So if, if you're doing graphic design, you may not want to export in JPEG. It's really, it's really only good for storage of photography, display of photography, and um, it also doesn't really support transparency either. So JPEG is really only good for you know exporting photography, exporting something you want to upload on the web or upload on Facebook or something like that. If it's not graphically designed, then JPEG is just fine. Now, next one is PNG. Uh, the good thing about PNG, it has lossless format. All the pixels are kept. It also supports transparency, which is great if you want to, you know, drop it into like Premiere Pro or After Effects and, you know, have a transparent background. If you want to upload it to the web, you can have a transparent background also. It also produces small file sizes as well. It's supported by all the browsers also. And this is really great for web pages, for widgets, for banners, buttons, computer graphics, screenshots, anything like that. If you're working with graphic design, if you're working with banners, if you're working with, you know, graphically generated text, graphically generated images, you want to save in PNG because that is what web pages like. That's what gives you the highest quality without losing too much data, PNG. Now, the only problem with PNG is that, you know, complex images and fairly large images tend to be bulky, so, so it may be a bit of a heavy file size compared to JPEG. Uh, so if you have really big projects, then the PNG file will be really big also compared to a JPEG file, which would be relatively a lot smaller, actually. So just be aware about that. But other than that, PNG is great for web design. Next, we have GIF.GIF, and this is mainly used for animation. If you're not doing animation, don't even bother using GIF. You know all those pictures that have Gandalf nodding his head to music or any other type of meme that you've seen with motion in the pictures. This is what this is made from, from a GIF, from a .gif. Use this format if you are creating an animation and you can create animations in Photoshop and in GIMP. So uh, that's the format you want to be using. It's mainly used for small animated images. So if you're working on something huge, you want to make a big animation, then you may want to look at uh, some modern HTML that supports video, which may be a better fit for that animation. Uh, the only problem with the GIF, and this is why I'm saying it's better for small animated images, it has only 256 colors per image, so it leads to kind of like a blocky look sometimes. While it does support transparency, it only really supports either fully transparent or fully opaque. You can't do like 50% opaque, 50% transparent. You'll have to pick one or the other. And uh, that's why I'm saying PNG is much better for graphic design if you don't want to, you know, have that restriction on you. GIF is really only good for animation, though. That's what's been my rule of thumb always. And lastly, we have TIFF.TIF. Now, this is a very lossless format. All the pixels are kept just like in PNG. The color, channel, the color channels can be coded in 16 bits. It can also store several images in layers. It's also supported by all imaging processing softwares. So TIFF is very good. Um, and it's mainly used for storage and exchange of high quality images for printing as well. I see a lot of people who are printing save in TIFF. And uh, the only real downside with TIFF is that it can be bulky and it can be a big file size if you once again have a very complex image or a very big image. So uh, TIFF is really good for storage and really good for exchanging high quality images or printing. Other than that, I would mostly recommend you use JPEG, GIF, or PNG. Those are pretty much the top three 
of best image format, JPEG, PNG, and dot gif. So hopefully you enjoyed the tutorial, hopefully you enjoyed this video, and uh, you you got some sense out of these image formats. I know when I was starting graphic design, when I was starting image editing, or pretty much working with any type of images in Photoshop or GIMP, or even in, you know, just looking at through my pictures in my, you know, Windows Document Explorer, I was always wonder, you know, what is the difference between these formats, and, uh, you know, hopefully you understand that now, and you can sort of make a better decision when you're saving images or exporting images. And uh, that's pretty much the goal of this video. So if you like the video, go ahead and leave a like. If you have any questions or comments, leave it down in the comments section down below. I'll definitely be down there answering any questions you have as usual. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, go and subscribe. I'd love to have you on board. Plenty of other software tutorials, Windows tutorials, uh, plenty of other Photoshop tutorials, video editing tutorials, image editing tutorials, lots of other tutorials on the channel. So if you're interested in that, Go ahead and subscribe. We'd love to have you on board. And if you want to check out my Patreon page and donate a dollar, you can do so. Click the card in the top right corner of the screen or bring it to the page. And if you want to check out the vlogging channel, the advice channel, the music channel, or the gaming channel, links are in the description as well as on the end screen. That's pretty much it, guys. Thank you for watching as always. And this is GS Man with Smart, and I'll be back soon. You think? Don't go anywhere. Yeah.